This conference will now be recorded. Sir, we did uh, tedious entries and uh, bank reconciliation. Very good. So in the tedious entries, we have been passed two transactions as we have discussed in the yesterday's offline class also. So today we will be seeing it, the payment to the government. So let me take it. So we have been passed display tedious reports. And if I go to the form 26 Q, so here I've been passed two transactions. So one is paying a rent. So at the time of paying the rent, I have been deducted the TDS. So 30,000 is that. And I've also deducted TDS on the contract. So when we have been made a contract purchase while making the payment, they have been deducted the TDS on this. So the party payment, either you pay it to the party or not. So the TDS, whatever you have been directed has to be paid to the government. So when you are going to make the payment towards the government, you are supposed to do it from the gateway of tally vouchers and press F5 for payment and Whenever you are making a payment towards the government, either it is a TDS or a GST, anything, it should be passed through. There is an option called autofill. So can anyone let me know that what is the shortcut key you are able to identify for autofill on the screen? What is the shortcut key you are able to see it for autofill on the screen? Control F, sir. Very good. So press Control F. You will be able to get the start payment. So select the type of transaction as start payment. Then select the tax type as TDS. Then you are supposed to select that period for which period have you been deducted the TDS. So here, by default, it has taken the period of 1st May to 31st May. Yes, I have been. Uh, I'm making this payment to the government, which is the transactions related to the May month. So it has taken the 1st May to 31st May. Then the last date of TDS direction for this month, it was 31st May. Okay, next, the section numbers, since we are using a multiple nature of payment, so it is there with the list of sections are listed out over here. So either you can be able to make the payment individually for each section related payment or it is better to always make the payment to all the sections. So you can be able to print a separate challenge for the sections related to the different different nature of payment. So but while making the payment entry, you can be able to select it as all items. So select the sections as all items, nature of payment as all items, directory status as all items, then residential status as all items. Now, whether we are supposed to pay this tax amount through the cash or through the bank, if you are having a tax amount lesser than 2000 rupees, it is accepted on over the counter of cash amount. But when it is crossing the 2000 rupees, so we are supposed to pay the tax amount up to 32,000. So which is more than 2000. So it is always suggested to make the payment through bank itself. So select the bank and sir, I'm the... not able to go till down, sir. After after the date, I'm not able to go down. OK, so if you are not able to go down means First of all, can you tell me that what is the date, period date you are able to get it over there? Sir, by default, it was April to 31st April. I changed to May, sir. I had passed on 2nd May entry, all the entries. Okay. Okay. You have taken it as a 1st May to 31st May? Yes, sir. Okay. Then the directed till date, have you taken as a 31st May or 2nd May? Sir, I have taken 31st May, sir. 
Yeah. So instead of that, you take it as second May because it will take accept the date only the date of last transaction you have directed the TDS. Can you try by giving it as a second May and enter? Is it allowing you to do it? Uh, yes, sir. So it is like all, always you should do deducted till means last entry. Yes, yes. yes. The deduction of a TDS on the last date or for that period. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So then you can choose all the other options and create the bank in case if you don't have it. Otherwise, you select the bank ledger if you have it. Are you there in the screen? Let me know. Yes, sir. Yeah. Shall I go ahead? Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. So then enter, enter so that it will show the bank allocation screen because we have taken the bank ledger. So here the check range details, everything it is going to be taken by itself. I'll just accept this screen. Okay, so I'll just escape. Now, come to the gateway of tally or from this screen itself, you can be able to go to the TDS reports. So you can press Alt G and you can be able to type it as TDS reports and you have to go for an option called TDS Chalan Reconciliation. Okay. So if it is confused by going to the go to option, so better you can come out of the screen from wherever you are there to come to gateway of tally. So display then TDS reports. Then if you go to the form 26 Q. So you can be able to see the TDS direction entries details. You are having it, but you don't be able to get the payment details below to the payment details there is an option called particulars there actually it has to show us what is that nature of payment of how much amount has been paid to the government or to the department so that amount details it has to come even though i made a payment entry it is not showing because you can observe under the payment details there is an uncertain transaction so if you go to the uncertain transaction so here you can be able to see bank details are not available in the payment entry. So that means at the time of making the payment to the government, what all the bank details you are going to have it. So that details you are supposed to enter it over here. So these details you can be able to enter it either over here or in case if you are there in the TDS reports, the same screen it will be appeared when you go to the Chalan reconciliation. So go to the Chalan reconciliation screen. So here it will be listed out. So press Alt R. Why do we press Alt R is we are going to get the cursor on the respective field. So as of now, my cursor it will move only up and down. It is not moving on the particular field. So in that case, I have to press Alter R. Can you see on the right hand side? There is an option called Reconcile. So where the shortcut key for the same is Alt R. Okay, so you can be able to enter it. So let me give the check the uh, check number. So it was triple zero. Uh, sorry, double zero one five four three was the check number. So from my checkbook list. Uh, check uh, range have given then check our DD date. Let me give it as 31st May. Then VSR code, I'll give it seven digits, minimum seven digits. It will be there. Then Chalan number, let me give it 101. It's an, just an assumption I'm giving it. Then Chalan date, again, this will be on 31st May. So for that, me, it will be 25 second May, uh, second May, sir, because I have deducted and passed entry on second no, that May. Is no, no, that is a direct and date, but you are paying it at the end of the month or on the next month within seventh. So you okay, can so within seventh, yeah, so within seventh June, we can pass the entry. 
Yes, yes, yes. So on what date have you been made a payment to the government? So that date you can be able to give it. And that date should be either at the end of the uh, month or it should be on the next month starting within seven. Is that clear, Disha? Yes, sir. Yeah. So now you can be able to choose it. The bank. So let me give it the branch name. Same way, I have to feed it up over here. Let's assume it that I made a payment with one check because I made only one payment entry and all this amount has been paid through one check only. And another challenge. So I'll accept this screen. So once you are going to enter all the details and accept the screen, then this screen will become empty. So it will become blank. That means the data is updated in the respective field of TDS reports. So now if I press escape and if I go to the form 26Q, you can be able to see that the payment details based on that particular nature of payment so that it is showing with the amount price is that clear to everyone yes sir yeah thank you for the response so these are the things which is going to be included in your TDS concert. So by this we are going to end up with TDS. Just give me a minute. So thank you for being online. So this is the concept what we are going to learn it through TDS. So now, have you been discussed about the inventory before? Disha? What sir, inventory, no sir. Inventory, we didn't talk about it, right? Yeah, okay. So let me talk about inventory. What do you mean by inventory? Have you heard about this word? Any time before the goods available for sale in the business. Okay. Okay. So now, so the inventory means anything we buy it for the purpose of sales. So if you are going to buy anything, any item for the purpose of business use, it is called as asset. Okay, so the difference between the inventory and the asset is anything which we buy for the purpose of sales, it's called as inventory. Anything we buy it for the purpose of uh, business use, it is called as an asset. Okay, so now when we are going to maintain the inventory, if my business is buying and selling of goods so in that case i have to maintain the inventory report so when i'm going to maintain the inventory report so i'll be able to have the classification of the items suppose if i am running a small shop where i'll be selling only one particular type of item for example if i'm a rice trader so i'll be able to sell and maintain the stock report related only to the rice items so i'll be creating the stock items with the different names uh, of that quality of rises so i will end up with only simple easy way of 
maintaining the inventory report is only creating the stock items and showing the purchase sales opening stock closing stock information but in case of if you are going to run a business where you got where you are going to have multiple types of products and uh, it has been categorized based on its behavior and its characters so in such instances we are supposed to maintain and we have to classify that into a group and category so let me take an example so let me create an table mm. Okay, so let me have this table in which first I'll take it as stock category, then stock group, stock item, then let me have it U O N, so which is nothing but units of measure okay so like this if i am going to have a list so what could be the stock category for example, let me take it example as electronic items. So on which if I'm going to have a multiple type of product under electronic items. So in that I will be grouping it based on its usages. So I will take it as home products. Under the electronic items home products, I'll be taking it as mixer grinder. And as we know that every item it has its own type of measurement. So when I say it as a mixer grinder, can I say it as an uh, pieces or numbers or kgs or boxes? So how can I be able to define its measurement? So how we can be able to purchase or sell this particular product based on what kind of units of measurement? Can anyone guess? Product number of product number of units of product. Uh -huh. we, we can take it as numbers. Sir. Yes. So you have to give the short name and you also should be specifying it that what is this short name it relates to. So the next in the electronic items only. So let me take another product office product okay let me take one more home product in case if it is one more home product in the electronic items what can i take it so which should be used at television. home television television okay so how it is going to be categorized number. or how it is going to be measured it is also numbers so let me copy it okay 
so now in case if i am going to take another product uh, which is related office related product office product so in that case i can be able to give it as laptop and this i can be able to give it at pieces example i can be able to give it as pieces okay now let me choose one more category type of item so that is furniture so in case if it is office product and home product means in the furniture let me take it home product means in the furniture let me take it as for example sofa and here there are certain items where the measurement of that particular item it will be with the package system okay it will be a combo uh, kind of a uh, product so let me assume it that one set of sofa which will be with one set and this will be three pieces so that means so so far will be one set the total it is uh, considered as one set where it will be consisting of three pieces of furniture okay so let me put it in this way then in office product let me uh, take it as for example rolling chair and this i will keep it as pieces okay so like this i can be able to define the inventory information so either i can be able to just create a stock items directly and i can create a unit of measurement it is mandatory for every stock item you are supposed to have a unit of measurement okay so when you are going to have a unit of measurement then only you can be able to give it how much quantity of stock do you hold it with so whenever it is stock item it is quantity okay just give me a minute yeah thank you for being online so this is how you are going to define your stock report based on its behavior based on its category based on its classification okay so now we will put all this information in tally how do we put this into the tally
with all this i will also let you know so there is a concept uh, there is a requirement whenever you are going to maintain the goods so it is mandatory that you are going to store it in a particular place so that we are going to maintain it as a godown the storehouse of the inventory so here we are going to take it two types of godowns one is bangalore godown and mysore godown okay so this is all about the godown so it is not mandatory that you should have a two godowns so you can have more than that or you can maintain only one godown so there is one default godown in tally which is already predefined that is called as main location so there may be a chance of getting this question in your exam so it is main location yeah so let us have all these details into the tally so let me put it into the question that purchase from 5 international of following items okay so let me list out all the items so let me have it okay so let me add all this Okay. 
Yeah. So. Okay, so whenever I'm going to make any kind of a transaction, I can be able to uh, make it for both the go-downs in the same transaction, or I can be able to have it separate, separate transaction for each go-down purchase or sales. Okay, so let me put it like this. So mixer grinder. Let me put it over here. Yeah. So the quantity, whatever I'm purchasing for the Bangalore go down. So it will be 15. For Mysore, it is 10. And the rate, okay, I'll take it in this way 15 numbers so that it will be easy to us. For mixer grinder, it is numbers. So it is uh, 1500 per numbers. Television. So this is in the numbers. So I'll take it 10 numbers. Here, 10 numbers. And the rate will be 3000 per numbers. Next, laptop. Let me assume it five numbers, or uh, it was five pieces. So let me take it as five pieces, three pieces for Mysore Godown, and 10,000 per piece. Then, so far, so I purchased three set for Bangalore, two set for Mysore Godown. So it is, the rate is 5,000 per set. Then the rolling chair, so let me have it 10 numbers. Uh, yes, it's pieces. Then five pieces for Mysore Goda. And each chair cost me 4,500 per piece. Okay. So let's assume it that there is a purchase for this quantity. Then next, let me have a transaction for the sales. Sales made to RK Furniture, RK Enterprises. Let me take it, RK Traders. Through Bangalore go down only so again.
Okay, so let me uh, try to put it only for Bangalore go down. Let's assume it that there was a sales to RK traders of 20 numbers. So let me So let me take it. There is a mixer grinder. I want to sell it at 20 numbers. Television at 8 numbers. Laptop of 2 numbers. Sorry, 2 pieces. Sofa is 1 set. And rolling chair is 3. And the rate wise. Let me change it. I want to sell it at 2500 per numbers. Then television, I want to sell it at 5000 per number. Laptop, I want to sell it at 15,000 per piece. So far, I want to sell it at 8000 per set. And rolling chair, I will sell it at 6500 per piece. Okay, so these are the quantities what I'm supposed to make a sell of. Okay, so is that everyone are clear with this? The explanation what we have it on the stock category, stock group, stock item, then units of measurement. Yes, sir. Yeah, so here the quantity is nothing but units. So how much units we are going to purchase and how much units we are going to make a sale of. Okay, so let's assume this and we are going to pass the transactions in value. Let me go to the gateway of tally. So to create let me go to the create option that is the C is the shortcut key. Then under inventory masters, select which stock category. Let me take it as category first. So here you can be able to give the stock category details. So now in case if you want to do the inventory and today, if I want to sell any kind of inventory, it is not possible to sell it without the GST rate. Okay, so what I will do it is I will also include the GST rates on all the stock items so that you can be able to learn inventory with GST that is GST on goods. Okay, I'll just add it with that. No. So let me put it the GST rates. So I'll explain you what is GST. GST means can anyone let me know? Have we heard about GST? What is the full form of GST? Goods and services tax. Yes. Uh, can I also know that from when it has been implemented? 1st July 2017. Very good. 1st July 2017. Are people are aware 
on what are the uh, tax rates are available what are gsc rates are available now sir 5 12 uh, 28 and uh, 28 to 5 rates are available sir 5 12 very good 18 very good, and 28 ha uh -huh. so it is 0% so i'll just put it over here itself so that i'll share this as a document which will be helpful to you just give me a minute i'll just put it just give me a minute i'll be just back so i'll share the screen with the gsc details i'm just preparing it on that yeah i'll reshare the screen yeah. so we have a uh, information about the gsc gsc is the consumption based tax levied on sales manufacture and consumption on goods and services at a national level so this tax will be substituted for all the indirect tax taxes levied by state and central government so the taxes which are applicable there are different uh, types of taxes are applicable so i'll just give it i'll just stay here okay so now we know that it has been implemented from the uh, 1st july 2017 onwards so before gsc we had a uh, 
uh, option of uh, VAT where on which we were been able to uh, pay it and that amount it has been enjoyed by the state government and whereas the other types of taxes whatever it was there it was it has been enjoyed by the central government so there was a uh, imbalance with the uh, taxes what they were collected and they were uh, able to reach it to the uh, respective uh, projects or for the funding so in this case they wanted to bring the tax uh, like where they can be able to get the taxes whatever it is collected it has to be distributed with uh, both uh, state government and the central government balance thing so gsc is a concept which, uh, which they brought it as an one nation one tax so where whatever the taxes that has been collected it has been shared by both the central government and the state government so having just listed out few of the tax types so these are not the tax types which have been erased so they are been eradicated it is there but uh, it has been subsumed as a one type of taxes where what all the uh, kind of uh, conditions whatever the rules and regulations were been guidelines were been given so everything it has been mixed up and it has been final uh, finalized as a gsc implementation guidelines so we are going to see that there are two types of transaction one is intra state transaction that is when the transaction happens within the state the buyer and seller are from the same state so that type of transactions are called as intra state transaction so when you say it as intra state transaction the tax whatever it has been either you make a purchase and you pay the tax or you make a sales and you collect the tax so the tax types which are applicable are central tax which is called as cgst state tax which is also called as stst okay so there is no separate taxes as a state tax and the cgst separately they both are same the terminologies are being used in a different uh, timings that it was initially it was called as cgst later it part it was been started to used it as central tax okay so there is no any two different taxes with the different names it is the same taxes with the different names okay now when you are saying that you are going to have a transaction within the state there are certain states which are considered as a union territory states so how many union territory states are there the three sir delhi puducherry and kashmir is that everyone agrees is there anyone else there yeah, are eight union territory sir <laughs> Fine, fine. But fine. out of it, three are uh, considered as a state because of the legislature. Yes, yes, yes. So three are uh, have become from union territory to normal states, right? Uh, sir, for GST purpose, they are treated as states so like Delhi, Kashmir, ah. and Pondicherry. Okay. So here we are going to have a uh, nearly seven to eight of uh, states which are considered as the union territory states. and whenever you are going to have a transaction as a intra state that is when you are going to have a buyer and seller of uh, same state of union territory state then the tax types which are applicable are central tax cgst and union territory tax that is utgst okay so now whenever you are going to have a inter state that means when you have a transaction between state to state in that case the tax types which are applicable are called as igst okay so these are the ways of gst transactions you will have it then whenever you are going to have the transaction that is purchase or sales so the tax types when you are going to create it you can be able to define it as the taxes which are applicable on purchases are considered as input type of tax and for the sales it is considered as output type of tax 
that means input means when you are going to pay the tax it can be recovered back so it is going to get back to us so that is called as the input output means the tax which we are going to collect it and we will pay it to the government okay so when you are going to register your business there are two types of options will be there for a register a register one is a regular dealer and another one is composition composition dealer good so what is the difference you have it between the regular dealer and the composition dealer the composition won't be able to take itc sir i won't be able to collect tax and won't be able to take itc it does not collect tax from the customer sir it pays yes. on its total turnover only yes so there is a concept of itc which is called as input tax credit so this input tax credit can be claimed only when there is an output tax is collected where composition dealer is not allowed to collect the tax at the time of sales where the regular dealer is allowed to collect the tax at the time of sales so they can be able to claim back their input tax amount on the output tax amount okay so that was itc that's very good okay so the next thing is so when you are going to record the information about the goods so you are supposed to specify that the particular type of good is relevant to what type of categorized goods so the concerned department has been given an identification for every type of item based on its behavior and character which is called as an hsn code so the hsn means harmonized system of nomenclature so i'll just highlight this yes so hsn code stands for harmonized system of nomenclature so this is the code hsn code which will be provided to every dealer so whenever they are going to get registered with their businesses at that time they are going to provide it that whatever the goods are applicable for that particular business type so they can be able to get the hsn code from the department itself so the hsn code it will be either in the two digits four digits six digits or eight digits so the maximum is eight digits what you are going to get it for an hsm code whereas when it is coming to the services so if i want to identify so what type of services we are going to do with so it will be identified with sac number so that is services accounting code number yes so these are the ways we are going to identify what kind of the goods and services we are going to purchase or sales in our business types okay so whenever you are going to record the information in tally or any software related to the gst uh, goods or services please be sure that what is the hsn code of that relevant item and what is the sac number of relevant service type okay so now when you are going to get registered to your business either as an composition dealer or as an regular dealer so you will be able to get a gst number so which is which is an identification number so which is also called as gst in so which means gst identification number okay so the format is 15 digits so it is going to be with the starting two uh, numbers or the digits it will be identification of your state code so which state do you belong to 
Our Karnataka state code is 29. For different states, they have a different types of codes. The next 10 digits are going to be the PAN number related to that business. So whenever we are going to register our business under the GSC, the first and foremost thing is they will receive the PAN number. I think I have been explained it when we were talking about the TDS. So when you are going to register your business, you are going to get a TAN and PAN. So your PAN number will be added into your GSC identification number. So that PAN number related to the business identification. Okay, so it will not be included with the personal uh, PAN number. It will be business PAN number. The next, after the two digit of code and 10 digits of PAN number, the 13th digit, it is going to be an identification of number of companies which are registered under the same company PAN. So I have registered my business. I have received a PAN number for my business. So in case if I'm going to run multiple businesses with the same PAN number, so in the GSC number, the 13th digit, it is going to be an identity that how many businesses has been registered under same PAN. The next 14th digit always remains as Z. So Z indicates as zero. Then the last digit, it is going to be an, a random digit which is going to be either number or an alphabet. Okay, so I have just taken few of the example of GSC numbers. So you can be able to make use of it when you are going to do the transaction. Okay. So I request everyone to have at least four to five registration or uh, the GST numbers, which you can be easily uh, get it uh, if you have been purchased anything online or anywhere outside, if you have gone to any hotels, restaurants. So any places when you are going to collect the bill, make sure that you are going to make a note of those GST numbers, which will be helpful to you while doing the calculations on GSC when you are entering the GSC transactions. Okay. Fine. So the next thing is e-way bill. Have you heard about this concept of e-way bill anytime before? Yes, sir. Yes. What does this e-way bill means? E-way bill means it is going to be a document which is consisting of the transporter details. So the transporter's name, address, identification number, and which vehicle they are using it, the vehicle number, which type of vehicle, and very important part is the distance traveled. So from which place to which place they will be traveling. The place of delivery, from the place of supply to, place of delivery so both the name of the places with the what is the total no, distance it is going to be traveled based on that kilometers the validity of the e-way bill will be calculated okay so how it is like that means in case if you are going to travel for 100 kilometers so before it was 50, so now it has been changed to 100 kilometers. So if your place of supply to place of delivery, if it comes within the 100 kilometers, then the validity will be provided as one day. In case if it crosses more than 100 and it is there within 200, Then it is two days. So like this, it keeps on continuous. So based on the kilometers calculation, the time period it is going to be get calculated. Okay, and 
this will be applicable the eway bill concept is applicable only when you are doing with the goods that means when you have a transaction on the goods and the gst is applicable on those goods then only this eway bill concept is mandatory at the time of transportation that means the transporter has to carry the eway bill when they are going to uh, start to transport the goods so when they start the vehicle they have to hold it a tax invoice in which it is going to uh, give a details of that who is the customer and who is the seller and what items what is the value of it with that you should also give it the information about the eway bill that is the travel with the tiny is that clear is that clear everyone yes sir okay fine so when you are going to record those informations when you are making it as a purchase all the invoices any kind of different types of uh, uh, items or rated uh, items or services if you are going to prepare it so it will be printed as an invoice for purchase it will be printed only as invoice when you are going to raise a uh, gst of sales so then it is going to print the different types of invoices so in case if you are going to have a product which is only with tax rates that is uh, 3% 5% 12% so the taxable items or services when you are going to use it in that uh, invoice so then it will be printed in the name as tax invoice suppose if you are going to do the transaction with the nil rated or exempted goods or services then the invoice side what it is going to print it it is called as bill of supply then in case if there is a combination of a uh, items or services both taxable and exempted in that case it is going to be income sorry invoice come bill of supply but before it was been in this format now it has been changed into tax invoice only so that means only when you have a goods or services which are been exempted or nil rated so those things it is going to be printed in the name of bill of supply otherwise it is considered as an tax invoice okay next the reports what we can be able to generate it in the gst so gst r1 so gst r1 it is going to be containing the gst sales related transactions which is also called as outward supply details the next is gscr2 it is going to contain the information about the purchase transactions that is nothing but inward supply okay then gscr 3b it is going to give you the information about both gscr 1 and gscr 2 it is a computation report okay so let's see with all this information on tally so let me put it yes so let me put it over here let's assume it that mixer grinder it is going to be at 
television also 18 percent laptop also 18 percent so far as 12 percent and chair let me assume it as five percent Okay, so let me put the same GSC rates details to the other tables. Okay. So let me create all these details in tally. So before starting with the inventory information, as I said, I've been also including with the GSC details. First, let me enable with GSC in tally. So get rid of tally, press F11. Under taxation, there is an option called enable goods and services tax make it as yes so once after making it as yes you can be able to see a gst detail screen in which we have to feed up with all the registration details about my business with the gst so state by default it has taken as karnataka let it be the same and the registration type i'm going to choose it as regular the Assessy of other territory. Assessy of other territory means whether my state, the selected state above, is it related to other territory? Is it Karnataka is belonging to the union territory state? No, sir. Okay. So in that case, you can keep it as no. What are the difference it makes? when you are going to make it as yes or no means if you make this option as yes it will remove the state option and it will give you as a union territory if you keep it as yes if you keep it as no it will show as state related options not as a union territory so for my state it is not applicable with union territory information so let me enter with next gs is applicable from by default it has taken the date of the starting of the books of financial year so books beginning date it has taken so you can be able to enter any date but it should be after the first of april sorry first of june uh, july 2017 that is after the implementation of gsc okay by default it has taken first may let it take it in the same way next gsc number as i said it is a format 29 aa bcn 2186 and 1zx so for example if i'm going to enter a wrong gsc number enter so it is going to give me the error stating that the GSC number what we have entered, it's a wrong. So if you have entered wrong GSC number and if you want to continue, yes, you can continue. It is just a warning message, that's it. It is a wrong. If you want to continue with, you can be able to continue with. You can press enter so that it will ignore it. But my suggestion always do not enter wrong gsc numbers why because if you are going to enter the wrong gsc numbers the gst reports will not be generated properly okay so it is always better you can be able to have a right gsc numbers 
This is the reason why I have asked you people to have the list of GSC numbers with you. So do anyone has any GSC number as of now so that I can enter that and clarify it that whether it is a genuine one or not. Okay, so let me take on my own side. So 29 double A. Sir, I have 29 A, A, WFA. WFA. 5061. 5061. D1. B1. D1. 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 Okay. D1. D1 sir. Z9. Z9. Okay. So if I press enter, if it is giving error, it's a wrong. If it is not giving any kind of message, then it's a genuine. Let me press enter. Yes, this is a genuine GSC number. So you cannot enter the same GSC number to all the parties. Even that also you should be very careful. So now I have entered this number. I cannot enter the same GSC number to the other party at the time of creation of party ledgers because every dealer will have its own their unique identification numbers. Okay, so the next one is the periodicity of GSTR1. As I said, GSTR1 is related to what kind of report? Sales. It is related to sales. So that means whenever you are going to do the written filing related to GST, it is mandatory that you should do written filing of GSTR1. So GSTR R stands for returns. GST return filing of number one, form number one. Okay. So it is asking us do you want to do the return filing on monthly basis or quarterly basis? So which one we could be able to choose it? Which is a right? Monthly, sir monthly why do we choose it monthly is there any idea about it ma one more thing. Yeah, good, it good, can good, be good. quarterly filing qrmp scheme is also there so we can choose that also but mostly we'll choose monthly only sir yes so let us know the reason why it's like one thing is as you know that there is itc so when do you be able to claim the itc when the seller uploads his details, sir. Yes, the seller uploading details is nothing but the return filing. Okay, until and unless he is going to do the return filing, he is going to upload the information on the GSCR1 on the portal. Okay, that is called as a return filing. So that means until and unless you are going to do the return filing. You are not eligible to take back your ITC. So now you tell us that whether we are going to wait for three months and we will file it in the fourth month and we are going to take back our money in the fourth month, or is that we are going to take back the money in the next month only? So my money, should I take it in the fourth month or in the second month? The second input month. Tax amount. Yes. So when are when are we going to select it mandatorily for the quarterly means when there is no sales or there is a less sales, which is input tax is more than the output tax in such instances. Is that clear? So my choice is as of now it is monthly. Okay. 
So do not enable anything in the additional features. Let it be the same. The next thing is EVA bill is applicable. Yes, it is applicable. And EVA bill is applicable from what date onwards? So actually, it was being introduced. So EVA bill, it is applicable from. First of April 2018 onwards. So before EVA bill, it was E Sugam. Okay, so let me give this details. So by default, it has taken the starting date of the uh, book's beginning date. Let it be the same. Then applicable, uh, the threshold limit, that means whenever you are going to raise the EVA bill, you should have it minimum of 50,000 or above value bill. So when you have a minimum 50,000 or above, so then it is mandatory. If it is lesser than 50,000, then it is a option to the user whether they want to raise the EVA bill or not. Okay. So whether is it applicable for interstate? Yes, it is applicable for both intra and interstate. The threshold limit for this, it is also 50,000. Then do you want to print the EVA bill? Yes. And e-invoicing applicable. This is uh, very recently they have been started from 1st of October 2020 onwards. That e-invoicing means you can be able to raise the invoice whose turnover is more than 50 crores. Okay. So very recently they made the changes as 20 crores. So that it is possible that you can be able to raise the e invoice that is a sales invoice through the gsc portal itself but you are supposed to get registered with the concern department for the same okay so now as of now e invoicing i'll make it as no and e invoicing it is applicable only to the b2b sales not for b2c okay so is there any option we have left out or you have not understood? Let me know, except addition features. Is there anyone online? Okay, so let me accept the screen and accept the F11 features. So now I have enabled the GSC option in tally in my company. So now I can be able to apply the GSC details to all the relevant masters. <clears throat> so let me create the masters. So go to the masters create. Under this, there is first let me go to the stock category. So what was the stock category we created in this list? Let me go and check it out in the list. So the category is electronic items and furniture. So let me create it. Electronic items. Let it be under primary. Accepted. Then one more category it was furniture. So there is nothing a detail about the GSE over here. So let me accept it both under primary only. Accept it. Now 
the next one is let me create with the stock group so what are the stock groups it is home products and office products so let me give the group name as home products so quantities of items to be added yes you can make it as yes and set or alter gsc details so if you are going to have a stock items specifically related to the particular group and the tax rates are applicable the same rate for that particular type of group of items then you can be able to enable over here and you can be able to give the gsc rates but i have a different items which is related to different groups with the different gsc rates in such instances i'll keep it this option as no okay so in the group i'm making gsc details as no accept it. one more it was office products and a primary should quantities of items to be added yes and gsc as no accepted so the next one is do not jump into stock item directly always whenever you have anything further classification apart from the stock item please create all those relevant options apart from stock item and then finally you are going to configure all those details under the stock items okay so let me not go to the stock item let me go to the units of measure so what are the units of measure i have it over here is one is numbers so let me give it so when you are going to create a units you have two options one is simple unit creation and another one is compound unit so simple means it's only one type of unit of measurement compound means two simple unit of measurement makes one compound that is a combo okay so presently for this it is a simple unit let me give the symbol as nos numbers and the full name is numbers numbers and unit quantity code uqc the full form of uqc is unit quantity code so this is the same symbol the units of measurement symbol it has been selected for the purpose of gst okay so units whatever we have created the symbol and formal name it is meant for the accounting of your books of accounts but uqc it is meant for the purpose of gst suppose if gst is not enabled then uqc option would have not been available okay so as per the uqc so for this unit of measure it will be numbers only the next number of decimal places two always try to give it number of decimal places as two accept so let me see what is the next that is pieces so you are in the unit quantity code also it is pieces so number of decimal places i'll create it as two the next the next one is when i see what is the left out unit of measurement you can see it Set. in the list it is Set. sets okay so but it is one set of three pieces i have to use a combination so first let me create a set as a simple so st is a symbol sets s e t s sets is a full name 
and units over here it is a, as a set and number of decimal places is two so what is the other unit of measurement related to one set sir piece three pieces so already we have created as a pieces no need to create the same units of measurement so now i have to press backspace so that i will be able to get back to the type of units choose the compound option and here you have to choose it. the first unit is what is the base unit so commonly with what unit of measurement do you make the transaction so it will be through set so that means one set of what is the conversion factor so that is three so i have to give the number over there and the second unit it will be pieces okay so that means it is one set of three pieces this is how you are supposed to create the units of measures is that clear yes so yeah so the next one is go down let me create the go down so as i said there is a one default go down which is in the name as main location do you want to make a change in that i don't want to make a change in that i will go to the create new so let me create it with the name as bangalore go down And the other one is Mysore. Go down. Okay. So till now we have been creating stock group, stock categories, units. Go down. Finally, we will come to the stock items. So let me create all the stock items. The first item is mixer grinder. So this is a stock item name. Next, here you can see under option on the right hand side it is listing out. So what is it listing out? What is the classification it is listing out? Home or office. You should select home. Uh, can home you see office. the heading of it? What is the heading of it on the top in the blue in color? Primary sir. Okay, list of uh, groups. Ah. Uh, so that stock means it is a stock group, right? So which group it is going to be relevant? Home. Home products. Okay. Now, before selecting the units of measure, we also created the stock category. But here I don't find it stock category option. So if I miss any option on the tally screen, where do I find that option? F12 f12 very good so i'll go to the f12 and here do you find any option related to the stock category yes sir yes under inventory details make use stock category for stock items as yes and accept the screen control a now units of measure so for mixer grinder what is the units of measure it is applied is it numbers let me check it out yes it is numbers now as i said the gsc is also applicable on this so let me make it gsc applicable as applicable then set or alter gsc details as yes so when i am enabling set or alter gsc details why do i enable that option means to provide the tax details that at what rate of tax it has to be calculated so for that reason gsc details has to be as yes and for the very first time when you are there in the gsc details screen press f12 and try to keep all this option as yes so that you will not miss out any option only for the first time every time it's not required you to make it as yes because once it is yes it is yes 
accepted. Next, the description. So the description will be the name of that goods as per the GST list of items. So whatever the name I have given the item name, I'll give the same name. When it comes to the services, it is going to be the same name of the services we can be able to give it over there. Okay, next HSN or SAC. So whether we are going to have a HSN code or a SAC code. HSN, sir. HSN. Okay. So let me add it one more column. As a HSN code. Uh, let me just give it as an assumptional. Yes, so let me keep it like this. So let me add this numbers over here. So for the first one is 5412. Yes. Okay, next. The calculation type. So always keep it as on value. When do we choose it as on item rate or on value means when you are going to have a stock item, any item where well, the GST rate is applicable for any quantity you are going to buy or sell at whatever the rate. Okay, so for example, there are certain stock items where if it is going to be on the particular value, that is, example as if the item value is lesser than 1000, so the tax rate will be 5%. If the amount is going to be the rate of item it is going to be more than 1000 then the rate of uh, gsc is 12 percent so when there is a multiple gsc rates are applicable then choose it with on item rate in case if there is only one item uh, sorry one gsc rate is applicable for any kind of item rates then it is on value so most of the items will be there on the on value option only. So let me choose it as on value. Then taxability. Is it a taxable item or is it an exempted or nil rated? Nil rated is nothing but 0%. So what is that option I am supposed to select it over here? Taxable. It's a taxable because the GSC rate is 18%. So let me choose it as taxable. And other two options you can keep it as no as of now. Now let me give the tax rate that is 18% for integrated tax in case, but same thing it is going to get splitted for central tax and state tax 99% accepted. Type of supply it will remain as goods accepted. So now we will try to take all the other items as much for possible at faster we can do so television so it relates to home products only then it is related to electronic items and this is numbers applicable rate yes <laughs> so let me choose it the same name so hsn code 9745 i have given on value it's also taxable and it is 18 percent next item it is going to be laptop it is also uh, it is a uh, office products 
electronic items it is pieces i think yes it's pieces and this is also on value taxable 18 percent next so far so under home products but it relates to the category of furniture and here it is set of three pieces i have to choose this units of measurement so yes let me give it as sofa what is the code i have given 8989 on value taxable but i think i have taken it as 12 percent accepted the next one is rolling chair and this relates to office products furniture pieces applicable yes rolling chair five one four seven eight four And this is also taxable with 5%. Okay. So this is how you are going to define all your stock item details. So now we are going to pass the transactions related to this. So let me go to the vouchers. And we are making a purchase entry and press f9 and when you are passing an entry with the goods item wise pass it through item invoice mode so that you can press ctrl h and choose it as item invoice mode okay so now party account name select the party so who is the party over here? Create ledger, no sir. Okay. So we have to create the ledger. Who was the party? Pi International. Good. Under sundry creditors. So make sure that you are going to enter the state, which is very important because it says that whether is it a interstate or intrastate the next registration type of that party and the gsc number so let me give the gsc number 29 a b c n 2186 n 1 z y okay i have given the genuine number and i will be accepting the entry so the screen has been accepted next select the part uh, purchase ledger so let me create one purchase ledger in the name as goods purchase do not have a common ledger for your uh, gsc and non gsc so have a different ledgers okay so under purchase GST is applicable. Yes, applicable. GST details here in the ledger wise, keep this option as no. Set or alter GST details will be as no. Then type of supply it is going to be as type of supply is goods. And accept the screen. Now select the stock items one by one so mixer grinder for different go downs different numbers so for bangalore it is 15 numbers 
the rate is 1500 per number and for Mysore it is 10 numbers so if I want to select the second stock item after the amount when you are getting the cursor just below to your item name then press space bar so you'll get the second stock item so the second stock item was television so it was 10 and 10 so 10 year and the rate was 3000 then Mysore go down and so it will take the same rates. One more item laptop five and three ten thousand. Five for Bangalore, which is ten thousand each, and Mysore. It is ten thousand. So far, Bangalore three and two five thousand. So one more item is rolling chair, Bangalore, that is 10 and 5, 4,500. Okay, so enter, enter. So in case if you don't have any stock item to select, Selected with end of list and the next you are supposed to calculate the GST So when I'm going to do the purchase entry, I have to calculate the GST with the ledgers called input tax CGST Input tax CGST so which will be created under duties and taxes okay and gst central tax it is zero percent do not write any percentage in the duties and taxes ledgers so let it be zero percent okay so gst is calculated automatically the next second ledger you have to have it is input tax SGST under duties and taxes GST state tax and it is zero percent. Okay, so this is how you are supposed to calculate the GST. So automatic calculation has to be happened. In case if the GST is not getting calculated, that means you might have not created the related masters properly. You might have not configured GST details in the relevant masters properly. Okay, just go through with that uh, video what we are going to upload it. Uh, so follow it with that. I think we have a uh, tomorrow with the uh, practical session is that right in the morning yes, yes sir yeah tomorrow morning i want you people to do it with the tds and gst whatever we have done till now including the inventory i'll be sharing this document whatever i prepared only till purchase is enough you have to do it and show it to me that you were able to get this calculation of gst and if I want to know that the GST rates, what all the stock items were having a different different GST rates, whether it uh, calculated the GST amount properly based on its 
tax rates or not because we have a tax rates 18%, 12%, 5%. So all the three types we have it. So let me check it out by using a shortcut key as Alt A. So if you press Alt A, then Alt F5 for detailed information. So when you press Alt F5, you'll get all the detailed information. So here it shows what all the rates, at what rates the tax has been calculated. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Yes. So press escape only once so that you'll be there in your entry and enter, enter. Since this invoice value is more than 50,000, so it is showing with eBay bill option. If it was lesser than 50,000, the eBay bill option would have not been available. Make it as yes and provide all the important information which is related to eBay bill. Okay, just read it up. And the reference type we are going to select here as new reference because it's a new transaction. And this is purchase one. Accept the entry. Once you accept the purchase entry with the GST details, you can be able to check the GST report that is going to get you of tally, display, statutory reports, GST reports for purchases, it is GSTR2. You can be able to see that details in this report. Okay. So we will try to put it all these things in the tomorrow's class. Okay. Thank you all. Have a nice time. Thank you, sir. Thank you.